First of all, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us. I have to say, I am so blown away by what you guys have done and the unique way that you've chosen to share your brother with the world. Um, what are you hoping that uh, audiences will sort of learn about your brother from this exhibition? I think I'd love for them to learn a little bit more about Jean Michel. You know, people ask about him very frequently, and so it's good to be able to provide them a little bit of context and uh, a deep dive into his personal life and more of his narrative. Right, because in fact he didn't share that much um, in writing, he didn't speak that much about his art or his history, and this legacy is incredible. Tell us about sort of the choices you made as, as curators and editors, what parts of the story were you hoping to be able to, to bring out for, um, for the audiences? Well, I think it was important for us to show context yeah. um, as to how and why Jean-Michel thought you know, particular things, um, what his references were, um, those references of, of um, our mother bringing us to um, museums and bringing us to uh, the library, to botanical gardens, to the zoo, um, that whole um, uh, Brooklyn um, Grand Army Plaza area uh, is an area that we frequented and we played around, we rode bi bikes. Um, so all of those parts um, are the parts that people miss yeah. um, in terms of seeing Jean-Michel as a human being. I read that he had a little junior membership card for, yes. um, for one of the museums. Yeah. Uh, I relate Brooklyn to Museum. that because as kids we would go into the museums on Saturdays and sketch in the halls. Mm -hmm. um, that's all about your mother, right? I mean, that's all about the choices. Where did this come from for her? Who sort of, who brought her into, or introduced her to art and culture in this way, do you think? I don't know who, if there's an individual person that introduced her to art and culture. I know that it's something that she's always been uh, very interested in and enjoyed, and she wanted us to enjoy that as well. And so she went out of her way to make sure that we got a little bit of all of it, you know. Did you guys recognize at a very early age his, um, if not affinity, his, his like passion for the visual arts? Uh, well, he was just very creative in all the things that he did, whether it was play, whether it was um, practical jokes, all of those things were thought, uh, had purposeful thought in, 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 in how he created those things and um, very elaborate as well. So it's not so much that we thought he had artistic ability, but just always really, really thinking Interest. about because those aren't things doing. that you think about as a kid. You right. know, it's not like we were walking around saying, you know, oh my God, he's a prodigy. You're going to be <laughs> Jean Michel Basquiat. You know, that's right. not right. that's not the thoughts of children. Are there things, having re realized this in such a beautiful way, are there things that you're hoping people will notice in particular, and things that you're hoping people won't won't notice? Things that um, you wish um, you'd done differently? There's nothing to hide. Yeah. At all. I mean, I think we want people to see Jean Michel and to see his journey. Yeah. And just different facets mm -hmm. and layers of him is really the purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling Janine that I walked through the gallery with Jeffrey Deitch, who hadn't seen the recreation of Jean-Michel Basquiat's studio. Mm -hmm. And he was so moved. And I said, how authentic does this feel? And he was like, I'm blown away. I, I feel like I'm there between the music and the non-precious way that the canvases mm -hmm. are strewn all over the place. How did you kind of make that decision? What were, you, what were you hoping to recreate in these very unique spaces? To really, in particular in the studio, it was really to recreate what we knew about Jean-Michel and what we know about the way that he lived. So it was really that. Mm -hmm. Just like we know that Jean-Michel would have paintings, you know, on the floor. We know that he would walk across his yeah. paintings sometimes. Right. You could see, right. you know, the footprints yeah. on a lot of right. them, yeah. you know. Well, I have to ask, who created the Spotify playlist? Because it's did. fire. We did oh that. Oh my God, it's amazing for we people did, who So many people have said that. Amazing. Yeah. I've been listening to it on repeat since we came to the exhibition. And then you, you can't not talk about the Palladium. Right. I mean, you guys created a space that was so important to him. And, and so um, t tell us about sort of how you decided which spaces um, were important to, to illustrate um, the facets of his personality that hadn't really 
been uh, talked about much? Well, the space itself is so emotional. Um, you know, we've heard a lot from people that certain areas, the recreation of our childhood home mm -hmm. was emotional and it brought them to tears. And we felt that Gemma Michelle was such a partier and nightlife was so important that it would be great to end with a celebration. Yeah. And since we had these two beautiful paintings in our collection, uh, what better way to show them but to um, recreate the Michael Todd room. Yeah, and the home for people who haven't seen it yet, um, they've we've recreated these really intimate family spaces mm -hmm. where you've shared um, ephemera and, and memorabilia, but also really tried to recreate the environment um, that you guys grew up in. Um, that must have been sort of both fun and a little bit heartbreaking too to sort of look back at. I don't know that I felt things. heartbroken about it. I was actually pretty amazed yeah. that we were able to do that. And um, uh, when you walk through there, it feels just like those two rooms yeah, in the like house. Yeah, like my family sold their house a long time ago. So sort of walking back mm -hmm. into the spaces, I would imagine would feel really moving. Yeah, very, um, very. Um, so Sir David Adagio created this, the, the spaces. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how you, um, what you described to him and, and the extent to which you feel that he's yeah. been successful in, in, in realizing those uh, aspirations. Um, well, I would say uh, when, as soon as we had the conversation with um, him and his team, he instantly got our vision. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, gave him an idea of what it was that we were looking to do here. We didn't want to do a white wall gallery yeah. exhibition. We really wanted it to be a space, um, an experience yeah. um, for, for people to see. And he was just on the same page within a few minutes and really, really took the vision that we had and and brought it to this uh, dynamic space that we're looking at yeah. right now. Yeah, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. Um, this is really blows the whole museum white wall gallery space out of the water. We and know. It's important also <laughs> to say that there's there's music, there's a soundtrack yeah. in the different rooms. Um, where these. Editing is tough, right? And how did you kind of make the decisions, at the two of you? Like, did you kind of agree on everything or were there things that you guys didn't agree on? I don't know that there's anything that we didn't agree on. It was more like, you know, this painting or that painting, you yeah, know? Yeah. It was more that, uh, or this song or that song. Uh, but it wasn't, uh, it was a pretty easy process. You know, we, um, in terms of the playlist, we just kind of went back to childhood and, you know, it was fun. Like we got on a Zoom one day and we went through these playlists and we laughed about songs that we yeah. listened to. We, you know, we jammed out a little bit on some of the songs. It was a fun process, yeah. it really was. The playlist was actually longer. We had to actually cut it down <laughs> way longer. What it was. Yeah. yeah. What are, are you surprised by, um, by the reception that the exhibition has gotten or is it um, more or less you knew the knew it was going to be super strong, right? I don't know. I think we had a vision for this yeah. and what is happening and what this looks like is what we envisioned. We manifested yeah. it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And we've heard from fans throughout the years um, going to other exhibitions. Um, they'll, you know, email us on, um, on our website and they wanted to see more. Mm -hmm. So we were really answering what they've been asking mm -hmm. for for so many years. It's, it's really important for children, obviously, to be able to see themselves reflected in their, in their heroes. Do you guys have plans to bring school children in, or um, will there be opportunities for young kids to, to view the exhibition? Absolutely. So okay. we're working with a studio in a school and, oh, uh, and pulling together some programming for school-age children. And that's important for us. The other day we were in here and there was a child that was maybe seven or eight and he was sitting on the floor in the royalty gallery. Yeah. And he was just sketching and drawing. It was really nice to see because that's yeah. the other part of this for us is you know, having a space that can inspire mm -hmm. uh, aspiring artists and creatives. People don't know that he was also trilingual, right? I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. Spanish, French, and English. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Um, what are what are some facets of his personality that um, you'd most like people to kind of 
understand that maybe didn't surface um, as much through his work? His generosity? Mm -hmm. Very much so. Um, he was a deep thinker. Um, he was shy, but at the all, at the same time, um, he was. It's weird because there were moments where he could be an introvert, but also an incredible extrovert. Um, but he was also shy. He was very purposeful, mm -hmm. and um, you know, Fun. incredibly generous, as Lisa yeah. said. You guys have made some really interesting decisions about how to share his work with the with the, with the world. Um, choices about licensing and about. Um, the use of his image. Tell, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what informs that and what what access means to you and why it's important. I think it's important for a person who perhaps can't afford to buy a drawing or a painting to still have the ability to have uh, a piece of his artwork. Mm -hmm. So if they're able to get it on a journal or on a doll or a purse, um, it's our way of, a lot, of really providing accessibility. And there are people who you know, disagree with it, and that's okay. Right. They don't have to, you know, if it's not for you, that's fine. But for us, it, it really is a way of us making Jean Michel accessible right. to the public. Well, interesting, I think I mentioned to you, so we have these art investment funds, and the idea is that we're exposing people who wouldn't otherwise be able to buy a $10 million painting to mm -hmm. make a $10,000 investment and to invest in a, in a in a portfolio of, of magnificent artworks like like your brothers, and thereby sort of learn learn about art um, in a way that's much less intimidating, mm -hmm. um, and have the ability to to feel a sense of kind of ownership um, mm -hmm. in it. So I, I totally get what you guys are doing. Are there things that you um, the things that that you like wish I'm sure you wish your parents could be here to see this. Do you, what do you think their reactions would be, your dad's reactions? I think, I think our parents would be very proud. Yeah. I think Jean-Michel would be very proud and happy. Yeah. Uh, we wish that the three of them were here. Yeah. Uh, but I think they'd be very happy, yeah. very proud. I love also that you've involved your whole family, all of the, the, the nieces and the nephews, um, and, and in this story about their legacy. Um, it must be totally trippy to be able to do that with your kids. And well, well, the reality is is that um, except for one, um, Joseph, the rest didn't meet their right. uncle. And, um, you know, after friends of theirs realized that they're related, they have so many questions. And, you know, they've, they've gone out to Google to, you know, get as much information that they can. And, of course, the information that we give them. And we thought that the best gift that we can give to them is, is this, sure. their legacy. And, you know, what they're going to take on um, once we're gone. Yeah. What are the plans, um, if you can share, sort of after the exhibition comes down um, with the estate? Yeah. We're still in the middle of the launch of the exhibition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's <laughs> okay. been a week, so. Yeah. No, no, it's free. Yeah. And I, it, it, this is an absolutely magnificent collection. These are works people have never seen. Some of them are in books. Many of them have never even been seen by art historians. So mm -hmm. it's, it's truly the kind, of, the kind of exhibition you want to spend a lot of time. I yeah, feel absolutely. like I've got to go back two and three times to take yes. it in. Yes. Um, but you guys have, paid, this is a beautiful homage that you've paid Thank to your you. brother. Thank you. And Thank I you. think you should be so proud and we're so uh, pleased to have been a small part of this and to contribute in, in the way that we have. So Thank you. Thank really you very, very much. Really very best of luck with everything and um, we'll, we'll look forward to the next chapters. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much.